My national rage when you see its chief, Chibe Sakunda, this is my chief, and my father. So I'm going to ask him to come to the pulpit and greet the nation and say something to the nation. I don't know what we are doing in Muchinga, whether there is agriculture or whatever. Your Royal Highness, three, four minutes, come and greet the church, sir. Thank you, Pastor. You forgive me. I'm not used to standing in front of a pulpit like this. If we to a pansa kakumoshi, I don't know what to take a nature puna. Tavem yum fungaya yuka pachin tamba. But it's a good experience uh, to stand in front of this wonderful church. And also for you to remind me that it's been a long time since I passed through this church. Yes, it is true. I am a member of this church. But, uh, Pastor, you have also given me a very heavy responsibility of looking after the chiefdom. So there may be times that I'm actually in Lusaka. But Sunday I'm doing something else which is uh, uh, which will which will not allow me to come and spend some time with you. But uh, be rest assured that I'm always with you in spirit. And uh, I must also thank you, Pastor, Madam, and the entire church for the wonderful work that you have done to this church since I was last year. But now the dust is gone, and it's a very good uh, experience. To everybody else in the nation of Zambia, uh, I just want to first of all, remind us ourselves to say God loves this nation very much. And uh, we may have a lot of challenges in what is obtaining politically, socially, and otherwise, but we have been known to be a nation of peace. And I would urge, and it's incumbent on each and every one of us Zambians to always remember that. We are fortunate we have not even gone through a war. But the kind of temperament I'm beginning to witness, or the impatience I'm beginning to witness in a lot of uh, our fellow Zambians is worrisome. You know, uh, we've always been able to resolve our issues around a peaceful table and pray over it. So I would just like to urge everyone to be cool and look up to God that everything shall be fine. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> How many of you say it is good that the Lord is bringing the chiefs to the Lord? I won't say much, but what Kamnet is doing in this nation, by the special grace of God, the Lord only will receive the glory. And the redeemed say, Amen. Let's read the word of God together as I conclude this sermon. Job chapter 16. It is just one verse that we've been reading. Job chapter 16. And the redeemed say, Amen. 
verse what? Verse 12. The Bible says, I was at ease, but he has broken me asunder. He has also taken me by the neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his mark. He has set me up for his mark. King James says, all was well with me, but he shattered me. He seized me by the neck and crushed me. He has made me, this is the New International Version, by the way. He has made me his target. Everyone say, he has made me his target. Talk to me. He has made me his target. Now, as we conclude this message, in case some of you watching us by television, you haven't been following us, please buy the DVDs of this sermon, and I'm concluding. You see, the job says all was well with me. Until God held me by the neck, he crushed me to pieces, and he has made me his target. And I gave you the reasons uh, or the message entitled, When God Makes You His Target. God doesn't target people just for fun. Thank you for your silence. He doesn't target people for fun. And let me say this, Brother Mutale. Some people will live on, on this planet Earth and go to the grave without God using them. Either because you are a proud individual, because the Bible says God resists the proud, and he gives grace to the humble. Beginning from us pastors, bishops, whatever, you may go to the grave without God targeting you. Why? Because there are several reasons. I wish I can go into that same on why God may not target you. But in the future I may go that since we are past that, I'm just recapping to let you know that you may walk this planet Earth and go to the grave without God targeting you. But when God targets you, there are certain things that happen. You know the life of Job. God is discussing with Job, with the devil, and he says, devil, where are you from? He says, I'm just from walking up and down. He says, okay, did you see my target? Did you see Job, my target? And the devil says, do you think he's your target? The reason why Job is like that is comfortable. That's why he worships you and he honors you. And God begins to get into an agreement. Okay, go and touch Job. Then you will see that it's not money that has made him to love me. With or without money, Job loves me. He cannot insult me. He says, God, let me touch him. You know the story. And the famous saying or confession by Job, the Lord gave me all these things. And the Lord has taken all things. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. There was God's target. He did not insult God. Over. TV. Just a TV. And you start crying. Over a TV. But Job said, Lord, you have made me my target. You have made me your target. And the Bible clearly says, Job never sinned against God. And what I love is this Brahmson. His wife looked at Job and admitted and noticed something. She said, Job, are you still maintaining your what? Your integrity. How many wives 
can say that towards their husband. Because even when they see the husband, I mean, we have names <laughs> from our wives. Even as pastors, the only person who can tell your status is your wife. Because when she sits there, she goes, Oh, you need gonga, oh, you. I mean, it is our wives who know us. It is very easy to come and thunder in the pulpit. Hallelujah! Jesus loves you! Yeah! Nishomuka shinaish, by the way. Tikwe na mwele samu kochi abantu. But Job, the wife says, are you still holding on to your integrity? And Job did not insult his wife. He just said, woman, why are you talking like one of the foolish people? Meaning you are wise. Don't join. He was so respectful, even in pain. He says, why are you talking like one of the foolish women? If the Lord gave us and the Lord has taken, can't we accept things from the Lord? Integrity. But Job was made God's target. And I want to show you why he was made God's target. I have spoken to you on the eight things why God made Job his target. But let me finish with the 12, I mean the 4, because I told you that there are 12 prophetic promises or statements towards your life and my life. Once God makes you his target, he will give you prophetic words why you should know that he targeted you. We'll just go to uh, prophetic word number 9. Daniel chapter 4. Let's be quick because we'll read a lot of scriptures today. Daniel chapter 4. I want to read verse 36 to 37. The Bible says, At the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor, my splendor, were turned to me for the glory of my kingdom. My advisors, <coughs> excuse me, and nobles sought me out, and I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. I became what? Greater than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise the exhort, praise and exhort. And glorify the king of heaven because everything he does is right. And all his ways are just. <clears throat> and those who walk in pride, he is able to do what? Those who walk in pride is able to do what? The reason why, Brother Mutale, God targets people is that the Lord... After he has crushed you, like he said to Job, Job said, all was well. Everything was perfect. But the Lord targeted me. It's because God wants to restore you to a place of honor that you may glorify his acts. I want to come down and talk to somebody here. The reason why God targets people it's because where you are at, Changala, you think that's the best. If God loves you so much, he's going to step into your life and allow certain things to happen, which in your English vocabulary you may call misfortunes. But I want to surrender somebody here and tell you that some misfortunes are not. It's because you are God's target. Some of the things that happen in our lives, they don't just happen. Sickness, loss of business, loss of parents, loss of what? It's because God wants to shake you up. Oh, I wish I could have some witnesses. When God not says that you are proud, 
He knows that you have the potential to worship him. He knows that you have the potential to become a powerful businessman. And he knows that your potential is not where you are at. He will shake you up. May I give an example? You know, Sunny, my favorite car is a Benz. I'm not marketing for them. But I don't know. I just like a Benz. But if you give me, you buy me a Benz that goes to 280 kilometers or 320 kilometers per hour, if it's written on the dashboard, me, I can push it there. Because you see, the one who made the Benz, he knows its capability. Now, at 240, 260, unless miracles are there, I want to guarantee somebody, no one driving a Corolla can overtake me. You are driving a Corolla. Oh, Kaka, Mr. Bean, the gods must be crazy. Kashani, Kaka. The, eh? Mini Morris, Ututuma, VW, what, what? Unless I don't know. But a Benz, do you know that machine? When I push it, I'm going to Kitwe. And they say, Pastor, you are preaching at nine o'clock. Why go uh, start off yesterday? I'll start off at 06, 07, Kitwaba. 220, 240. Na aircon. Na ka perfume I'll be there. But you are Corolla. Kwamba the day before. Mu afternoon. Because na engine kwali ba overheating. There are a lot of things that happen. But child of the most high God, I am simply saying this. Can you imagine God knows you are a Benz? And then you drive that car at 60 per hour. You are late for meetings in Kitwe. No, 60, just in case I overturn. Hello, what's then I reduce to 50? Tell me, even if you are not a driver, Busenish Muliubuntu. Hello, Muliubuntu. A big car like that. You are moving it at 40, 60, even if you use humidity. Please check your humidity and check your levels of sanity or insanity because chances are that bots could have been loose in your head. And most of us, you say you are rich. You say you've got money. You are doing well. You know what you are doing? You have just sold 10 bags of vinkubala. And to you, that is the best thing that has ever happened to you. 10 bags of vinkubala. And you call yourself a business person. So because God knows your potential. See, track chile from makuse range vinkubala, 10 bags. Whoa! He shakes you so that you may know that there is more business than vinkubala. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God shakes people so that when they are fully restored, he can restore them to the former glory and beyond. And I want to prove this from the Bible because I don't just like preaching my thoughts. Nebuchadnezzar, ladies and gentlemen, was more powerful than Donald Trump. Read the world history from the books. No king was as powerful as Nebuchadnezzar. Even God recognized Nebuchadnezzar. Today you have Donald Trump who can even be threatened by this boy in North Korea who has a funny haircut. Iran, this, what, what. He cannot come out like that. Nebuchadnezzar was powerful. He was overseeing the whole world. He conquered at that time. And God noticed that he was powerful. He had a dream. Ladies and gentlemen, Mulungu, God is God. 
He can make seven thin cows eat the booze from Botswana and still be hungry. <laughs> That's the God that we are talking about. Nebuchadnezzar was so proud, he felt that nobody could touch him until God said, okay, Nebuchadnezzar, I'm going to send you in the bush for how many years? Hello, for how many years? Your Royal Highness. Seven years. Seven years. After seven years, Nabakabiro Bamu Bariaba Champu Kabaria. Kuti mwa wele up. Te tiba wele lepo. Imagine President Lungu or anybody just going out for seven years. Tababa. Hello, I said. Chisokone, chisokone, icho, icho, icho. Kuchi babu ele lapu. It never happens. But God shook Nebuchadnezzar. He took him for seven years. He was eating grass like an animal. He, a person who was walking tall. Listen to this. The Bible says, God made him to be walking like this. Like an animal. He never lifted up his eyes to heaven. For seven years, he never saw how the sky looked like. He would graze like an animal and just walk like this. Then the Bible says, at the end of seven years, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven. I lifted up my eyes to heaven and he saw Jehovah. And God said, okay, Nebuchadnezzar, now, why I shook you up is that you may know that there is only one king. He is not voted in. He cannot be voted out. He is not elected. He cannot be demoted. He lives forever. All kings, all presidents, they submit to me. And when he noticed that, the Bible says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, let me read the scripture now that you have, you, have, you have heard this. This is powerful. Listen to what Nebuchadnezzar said in verse 36. Jehovah. At the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor splendor were returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. My advisors and nobles sought me out and I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exhort, glorify the king of heaven because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he will be able to humble. I want to speak to somebody watching me by television. You are not too powerful for my God. It doesn't matter who you are, which office you hold. I want to submit to this nation of Zambia that my God is forever powerful. And those of you who think you have no need for God, one day the Lord will shake you up. You are not the first to be shaken. He has shaken people and he will keep on us shaking the people. Amen. Ask some businessmen around the world, in Russia, everywhere. God, when he touches people, he will touch them. Amen. But before he does that, humble yourself. Amen. And when he does it, Nebuchadnezzar said, I recognize that God, whatever he does, is right. All his ways are what? They are just. Job 16.12, he says, All was well with me. I was at ease. I relaxed until the Lord made me his target. He shook me up. He broke me up. And I want you to know, look at Job. Shall we read Job, please? If you can, 
Let's read Job chapter 8. Job chapter 8. Job chapter 8, verse 5, 6 and 7. This is a sinner, Bildad, who came to mock Job, a friend to Job. Yes, what they said was wrong, but look at what Bildad said to Job, and I'll prove it from Scripture. Verse 5. He didn't know this. He started accusing God, Job that your children sinned in verse 4. But I'm, my interest is verse 5. He said, but if you walk, if you will look to God and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse or restore himself on your behalf. Talk to me, somebody. If you will walk in purity and upright, surely now he would awake for you and make the habitation. He's going to restore you and he's going to restore to you your rightful place. I want to read verse 7. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end should be greatly increased. Your beginning may be small. This is Bildad advising his friend. That my friend, I know God has made you his target. And he has shaken you. But your beginning may be small. But your, your later end will be bigger. Let's go to Job chapter 42. Because I've got something to prove here. Anybody that God has made his target... He really works on them. Job 42. Job 42. I want us to read from verse 10 to 13. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job what? Are you reading with me? The Lord gave Job what? Twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought of upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and everyone um, an earring of God. Verse 15. The Bible says, And in all the land were no women found so fair or beautiful as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. I want to say this, Donji. Can you imagine? I don't know why the world is like this. When Job needed the money, it was not there. When he needed friends to visit him, it was not there. Job was attacked by Lucifer, and all his friends ran away. And the only guys who came to see him are these mockers, Bildad and his friends, who came from the Far East, fellow businessmen. And the Bible clearly says that Job remained alone. Until when the Lord turned his captivity. Vashimuila, let me tell you something. Shikulu ifintunga chitafiri buino, tamuakakwatama relatives. You won't have relatives. The only people who will be close to you are your children. Some wives have run away from husbands. Because when things were good, <laughs> I love you, kiss me. Because Valeria. Ngafiavipa. Aba ume, aba ume, aba ume. Muliba ume imwe. 
Tauli mwene itorosha. Nge miefui. But even wives, they've been abandoned by certain husbands. Bale chula na nkwe, mwana kashi bale chula na nkwe, lidia fia wama. Ayase ndaka na makwe nkwe. Uko, asho mkashi wako. You know these things don't jia real. Let's not pretend to be holy. It happened to Job. His relatives, friends, went, they went away. But when the Lord turned his captivity, like some of you, God will turn your captivity. Amen. When the Lord turned the captivity, his friends came, his sisters came, his brothers came, and they started eating with him, Brother Mgala. And they started giving him money. When he needed money, it was not anywhere. Alale sangale diringa na iwe changala. Na abantu kukota na pia. Fifte kwachi. Fifte kwachi. Lidiafi ababu ino. Elo vale kupela 1,000 changala. Yes, 1,000 for dog time. In humanly speaking, you feel like saying idiot. How many of you know what I'm talking about? If you can't buy me a blanket now while I'm alive, do I need your blanket in the coffin? Keep it. Now, you know, this rose, the flowers, we are going to pay the last respect. Where is the first respect? And where is the first, second, third or fifth respect? Last respect. Kasunge. Umutwe. No, you can't. If you are to do something, do it now. Amen. If you are to appreciate somebody, appreciate them now. Amen. If you are to respect me, respect me now. Amen. I don't want you to come when I'm in the coffin. Oh, how we loved this was a powerful man. I'm not saying that I'm dying, actually. <laughs> Nikalipo. But I loved this person. What? When was the last time you visited that person you loved? When was the last time you gave them money? Kabwalala. This is why I tell you, you people who hold on to your jobs like you are holding on to God. Now, pastor, you know, I didn't come to church for five Sundays, six Sundays. The job is taking a toll. One day you will die. And when you die, your employers are liars. They like lying, these guys. Oh, this person who has died, it will be very difficult to fill up his gap. In the meantime, somebody is acting and doing better than you. No, the company will not be the same. If you have not No, the company even talked about his hard work. Kuchech, you can't come. Because you are a hard worker. Let me tell you something. Some of you, the reason why God does not touch you, you are not his target. I want to tell you what you will never hear in churches. Bushayne nda sunge fintwain. Echi on kako telama na mwila. Ina i just leave it. De sanganje wa tilanda kulanda. Kwa di finde landa so. Mweva mona tinti toshika mishika uka papa. As a matter of fact, even as you are walking, you will inquire and meet it here, you are back But there are those of you who are not proud and you say, I don't want God to humble me. You humble yourself because when God humbles you, it's a different ballgame. Job received twice than what he had. So, Brother Chitalu, I want you to know, my son, that what you are going through is not coincident. When you are God's target, if in to feel a pain, elonga fia pain, how is it? Nangun injection tai bomba. Until the Lord turns your captivity. Amen. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Until the Lord turns your captivity. Then, 
those people who were looking down on you, they always come back. I said they always come back. Amen. And that's just how the world is. And this is why me, it doesn't matter. You insult me or you don't insult me. It makes no difference. How many people, your royal highness, have pastored in this church? Some are pastors, some are businessmen, some are what? And of course some are useless. And some, it's mixed degree. <laughs> I can't boast that I've produced top of the range. I've heard people, oh, Pastor Chiluba, oh, you are the best preacher I can ever sit on. You even feel the spirit moving. This one telling me. But when they leave you, they drop you like a bad habit. What happened to the compliment you gave me? They don't even say bye, Brother Mutari. Ah, my sister, you don't come to church. My brother, what does that <laughs> Ah, to kesa kunganda. If you want to kesa kunganda. No, I'm not inviting you home. I'm inviting you at church. Whenever I hear a church, former church member, ask my wife. Whenever I hear a former church member saying, ah, to kesa londola kunganda, the first thing I do is to delete their names from my phone number. I don't like that. I just get home and say, I met this couple or this brother. The first thing I do, Changala, I did it. How long were you on the copper belt, Changala? Four years. Did I delete you? Were you not talking with me? When I'm coming to Kitwe, my wife and I would just say, call our son Changala. He would organize our stay there and everything. Why didn't I delete him? He didn't quit this church. He went for work there. There he is after four years, he's back. So me, I should keep your number. Because who can kunganda? You must get to know who Pastor Chiluva is. No, Pastor Chiluva is my number. Na alifuta. That's why I don't call you. And some of you, you call me, Ah, Pastor, it's me. Na niwe. Ah, Pastor, you have forgotten me. Mule ikwatilo lusi. Don't overrate yourself. Dr. Siatwambo, you know people overrate themselves. They think Pastor Chiluva's phone can even accommodate 5 million. Epo akwatila fe cell phone since 19 something. All the numbers are there. My wife and I, once in a while, even three weeks, two weeks, two days ago, I was going through the numbers. Then I looked at one somebody. He hasn't called me for some time. And I said, ah, let me not delete this one. I called him. I said, hello, I haven't seen you for some time. He doesn't come to this church. He's my friend. He says, oh, boy, you know I've been out. What do we know? Now phone number na little fish. I was trying to ask your number. He called somebody who said, No, I can't give you Pastor Chilua's number without his permission. My spirit just told me, no, no, boy, you are shuka, because you were on your way out. <laughs> but some of you, you keep people who don't even talk to you. Phone numbers are even jamming. Hello? Anika Dalai! Ubupuba tabuwa kwa takala. Hello, tabuwa kwa tamuti. Go through the, the phone. Chua, 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 out. Chua, 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 out. Because those people may feel they are important in your life. Certain people, let me tell you, Brahm Tale. Look at me, church. Cameras, can you pick me, please? Certain people, I can't jump to go on the pulpit. That's why there are steps. Certain people are on level one. On your way to your world stage. So once God brings you to level two, why do you need this? These are some of the messages you will never hear anywhere. Pastor, so mubom fiafia bantu, efe na 
I'm simply saying, are these important? Let's be real. Are these important? God says, I'll take you to the promised land. Is Egypt important? Are you getting me? God says, I'll take you from John Howard. Yes, Lord. I go from John Howard. I am out of John Howard. Then I am here. Is it factual for me to be looking at John Howard? You know, sometimes just be real. When God takes you here and the people run away from you, it's because they came at that time for a season. And I want to say to my fellow pastors, you who fight over people and cry, why am you were baptized in lemon juice? You know, my judge, panic. Let them go. Even in business, wayamba na kapenta. Le sanga kutumaku Japan wala shem yotoka. Leave si avonga. Leave si avonga. When God lifts you up, wafuma ku miyotoka, wakwata garage. Elo let time poti miyotoka na fimbi, leave kabwata. Yo, let entume pane o beating. Na, wali chilapo. Echo mwewa ambiyama levo zita ya chinjisha. Because you are too holy, you are too smart. You don't even admit certain things that you don't belong there. Ababa wafuma pu haba. You are here. And God brings you here. Why are you still fighting with the same pastors who are dealing with you? Dr. Siatambo, you message now. Because certain pastors cannot take you to another level. You need to go at another level. Ama businesses vane. Yali kwa tama levels. Ama shaishu mafyefyo. Nifuevo fuewe na kristu. My brother Clever there and the wife. I'm a business bachelor. If you asked him to be selling carpenter, Muna ni umumu chidi mbulu. Atibesule carpenter shop. Nava kashibale shisha tomato. Isn't that an insult? Le sangaku le toku. Apa. Ni shuli apa. Others who say, Mwamu ni febale shimikila. Bala yu mfabaja. So ni leke lenji. Because I'm here. <laughs> I am here on my way to the Are you hearing this? You know, I'm just helping you to get rid of certain people in your life. I'm telling you, you will never grow, you will never progress. Ask rich, uh, poor daddy, rich daddy, ask Sir Richard Bronson, ask these people who are in business. Those are business principles. Te timule yangala no muntu, uwa kweba tis annual turnover is 10,000 kwacha. And you expect to be getting a million. It means the two of you, something is wrong. If the Lord has changed your levels, Go to the levels where you are. Hmm. I just spoke to somebody here. And I know, Don G, this message I'm telling you, it will bite a lot of people, especially pastors, to say, Mwamo na nomba, echo ba yumfu ila. Pantu na wako wataka TV, na liku wataka bidye. It's true. Ten, the prophetic word, number ten. Genesis chapter twelve. Let's go to Genesis chapter twelve quickly. This is my favorite scripture.
verse 2, the Bible says, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name what? And you shall be what? You shall be what? The tenth prophetic word that God wants you to have is that God wants to introduce you to the world stage. I will make you a great nation. Israel became a nation. Israel is the new name or was the new name for Jacob. Jacob was a thief, a deceiver. He got his birthright. He did a lot of things. When he met the angel... He said, Lord, I won't let you go until you bless me. And the angel said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. And Jacob means deceiver, supplanter, or a cheater. So he says, okay, your name shall not be called Jacob, but your name shall be called Israel. And the Bible says, I will make you into a nation. Is Israel a nation? Does God tell a lie, Changala? At the world stage, can the world ignore Israel? Can Vladimir Putin ignore Israel? Can America ignore Israel? I want to prophesy to somebody here that, ladies and gentlemen, let's grow up in the things of God. Amen. Some of you are world material. Amen. In your businesses, God wants to introduce you to the world. Amen. We had a bank here called Finance Bank. Finance Bank was found by Matani, a Zambian Indian. Today, it's not there. And I know it's due to political reasons. Not because Finance Bank was doing bad. No. That Finance Bank could have gone to Malawi. It could have gone to South Africa. It could have become a world bank. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We had another bank right here. It was called Meridian. Meridian Bank. It was founded by the man Sadanis. It was there. I don't know how it collapsed. But those people, Matani and... What's his name? Sadanis. They are the vision. Dr. Siatwambo, it's a tragedy that you confine Great North Road Academy to Zambia. You must take it to South Africa. Amen. Take it to Malawi. Amen. Take it to Congo. Amen. Let Great North Road Academy become a world vision. Amen. And this is what God says. I will bring you to a center stage. Amen. So when God targets you, it's because he wants to introduce you to the world. Amen. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. And through you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Amen. Ryan, as long as you are under me in this church, any business you think of, Sunny, you should think it in a global manner. Mule toyu mwai chati zugabed, eh? Zugabed. Umu inewa Facebook unan. Mark Zugabed, eh? <laughs> but we all know you. Umu in our Facebook. Does he work for the government of America? Is that his personal thing? Yes. That's his personal vision. What about the owner of this, uh, where you buy things on the internet? Amazon. Is it a government thing? Huh? Zambia can't see Chabasha and Napata. If any better, I'll never to Kalash to Pepper Amazon, Amazon, Moya, I'm a computer scientist. Ulebuelo le Pangafe to Katun. When is God going to raise people? Who will emerge from this economy? I mean, Zambia, you are a great nation. Me, Donji, I look forward for Zambians who can shake the world. Amen. Right from Zambia. 
Let them know that in Zambia there are people. In the area of academics, I was told by one engineer, the DC-10 that you see, all the DC-10 planes in the world, they have an, an accident component. This was told to me by the university student from outside. There is a component. Those who study if you andeke, Katusha from Ufita, study andeke your royal highness, aeronautics. There is a component of accident or shock or something. Guess who developed it? Our very own, Clive Chirwa. Our very own, Isaac Uno Our own is it? On the DC-10, there is this signature. We have produced people that can do things. This is why I say, Zambia, Mr. President, as long as there are cadres holding certain positions, Zambia won't go anywhere. Some of the people must be flushed. Whether they are relatives to who or what, vakateka vachagwa, vaka kefe pamens. Whether you work up or what, bring your qualifications. Amen. Get out. We need people that are qualified. DC, you must have some developmental ideas and the qualifications in your mind. How to develop the city. Not you could have a suit, Mulam would have inspect you follow. Eona cancel and got to inspect. At my DC vice, Kumu follow, Yomu follow. So I'm going to try inspect Umu follow by DC. Cancel like a inspector. In a changaline, if I was a minister at the Kesulenika shopping mall, I would just speak in Zambi, in Nyanja. Bande Telati, Mr. Come and open the shopping mall not to cool up. Cool and a femuchi Nyanja, Masover about. You come and call me. What about the PS? What about the people there? I love from which In developed countries like South Africa, Japan, you never see big people going to open it. Zambia is a great nation. I said Zambia is a great nation. And we are going to take it higher. I said we are going to take it higher. God is bringing people to a world stage. Number 11, prophetic word. And this is good, Vashmuila. The reason why God targets people is to bring them to a place of being unstoppable. God will put you and me on the unstoppable plan. Everyone say unstoppable. Say it out loud. Let's read Psalm 105. Quick. Psalm 105. Are you there? Verse 15. God will say to you after he has dealt with you, do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Listen to me. 
Pastor Wealth. Sunny, when God has shaken you and he has done something to you, God will put a seal like he put the seal on that man who killed his brother. What was his name? Ken. God put a seal on his head that nobody was to kill him. And when God puts a, a seal on your ministry, he says, touch not my anointed one. Amen. You become unstoppable. Amen. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. Amen. When God says, touch not this company, not even a witch Amen. will come near you. Amen. I said God is raising people Amen. in this nation Amen. who are going to be on the world stage and they are unstoppable. Amen. Lift up your hand and say, I'm untouchable. I'm untouchable. I am unstoppable. I'm untouchable. Let me tell you something. Even when the economy goes down, you will go up. Amen. Look at this irony, Bamutale. I have said it in this church. I've said it on partnership of greatness with my wife. Zambians are running from Zambia. The, the quacha is weak. The economy is not good. And you are speaking a lot of negative things to international communities. Let me tell you something. I don't want to call you names, but you lack a vision. If you can be uh, quarreling with your wife, and then you say, Neighbor, come, my wife is this, my husband is this, you are useless. Why are you quiet? Do you write things on, on, the, on the blog? Why should I quarrel with President Chagua or this government and I start going to Cuba, I start going, Boo, you are a coward. Amen. Let's solve our issues here. Amen. Like if you are what to stick up here. Because these are some of the things I'm saying. I go to areas where people don't go. But in any end, am I? No, it's true. Why call the Americans and these people to come and just speak on our kwacha? That's our kwacha. Why doesn't the nation involve me? The Bible says if my people, Edward, who are called by my word, when was the last time or the first time the government said, church, pray for the quacha or pray for the economy? You think we are not well and able? My ascender economist, one, Adifilwe Chupo. Come and fix your, our economy. But Adifilwe Chupo fix Xinga, it's Chupo Chakwe. Hello, Mulemule Tapa Nation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amana, Baba Fiechi, Bebebe, Ali Filwa, but co economist. Keep that man there. He's a failure. Yeah. Let him first fix his children, Amen. his marriage, and all this. Then bring him at the world stage. Amen. Why I'm saying this? Because Zambia is a Christian nation. Amen. You involve God, you must know who you are bringing at the center stage. But I know when God has dealt with somebody and he says, touch not. Amen. Let me tell you, no witch in Zambia will come near your dwelling place. Amen. May I go further? Amen. Isaiah says it clearly. Brother Joshua, when God says, touch not my anointed, he even goes further to say, no weapon. Formed against you shall prosper, including your lies. Rumor mongering, Zambia is good at lies. But let me tell you, if you are unstoppable, those of you listening to me by way of television, and those of you that are here, if God has marked you, you are unstoppable. No rumor will bring you down. Amen. Nothing will bring you down. I like what Pastor Bonke said. I cannot claim this saying. I'm glad that I heard, I heard him say it in our meetings. He said, you know, when a lie is told, 
It goes around the earth three times when a lie is told. It goes around the earth three times while truth is still tying its shoelaces. Nishtaila ima no kuima. Ireka kafien sabato. Nishumu fibuari around the world. Ana mwishwa baba zisa bali kwa tefumo. Kwa Kansha wa kumwene. Wa kumwene ya wafumine kupa mozi. Na wekuta. Elo akalifu moka afumba. Lealadala kwa tefumo. Haa kuikuta. But don't respond. Let the lies go on. I want you to know, Brother Mugala, nga muleo mfwefi avantu valanda, tamuaka yapatali. Are you hearing, Tim Kamnet? I said, are you hearing? Muchime mbatu landati, uwa ingila mushitu. Tomfu answa aswa. Let me interpret that. When you are in the thick forest, and you are alone, you don't just, cha cha cha. Even Malinso makes noise in the forest. Anything that moves. So when you are in the thick forest, just know that you are equal to the task. Just observe that there are no lions, there are no what. You are already there. And I want somebody today for the Lord to push them into unstoppable mode. What I've been saying, Mike, is this. Zambians are running away from Zambia. No, the economy is not good. Zambia, people are talking out there, the economy is not good. Chinese are flooding into Zambia. Where you are running away from, they are flocking here. You can't even imagine leaving China, Beijing, Guangzhou, to come here. You, you are living here. Ukuya mukusuka fiembale mu yuke. You know, I'm in the United Kingdom. Nishu <laughs> chita. Hallelujah. Twelve of you chita ku United Kingdom. Kuya sango muntu ne fi bogo super airport. Mwai seni, mwai seni. Muntu ne pafiat muaba ku yuke. Kani shi muimia fi bogo super airport muinye. Ngaba fi maku India. Na muse na ne piri piri mumatwe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Lift up your hands and say, I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Say it out loud, I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. This is what happens, don't you? When God has dealt with you and He has put you where he, you belong. Psalm 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, or the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, yes, who does not walk in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in season. His leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he does shall do what? These are unstoppable. Edward, a tree which is by the river doesn't matter whether there is rain or not. Those of you who fly, when you look down, you coming to Zimbabwe, you are going to Egypt, wherever. Look down if you are by the window. You don't have to be in that country to know that that's a river. Amen. Everywhere it's brown, brown, brown. But you see green, green, meandering that. You know that there is a river. Amen. Amen. May God put you by the streams. Amen. I said may God put you by the stream. Amen. Right here in Zambia, where they are saying business has become tough. May the Lord invite you by the stream. Amen. May you make money in Jesus' name. Amen. 
where other people are saying we will die. May you sense life. I'm talking to somebody here. Lift up your hands and say, I'm unstoppable. Listen, the God you save does not operate according to the budget of Zambia. Please understand that. If you confine God to the budget of Zambia, you'll be history. Confine your budget to his budget. He says, I make a way where there is no way. And he says, I'll go before you. Donji, come here, Sani. Come here, Donji. You see what God says, Sani? The bakery you are starting. He knows in the, there, there are a lot of markets. Amen. So what God will say is, Donji, remain here. Because this side, there are bakeries that began a long time. So I will go before you. Amen. And level. <laughs> I will level. Amen. I will do the market. Amen. So God will go and see this bakery, that bakery, this, what they do and what they use, the ingredients, what they use and everything. Then he will come for you. Hallelujah. And say the Donji Bakery, Hallelujah. you shall add this ingredient Amen. and this ingredient. Once somebody tastes that, mm -hmm. because God gave you the ingredients, mm -hmm. they will think they are under drugs. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I will go before you. Amen. And I will level the place. Amen. Those hills, you don't have to climb them. Amen. Because he will climb them for you. Hallelujah. Amen. He will make things straight. Amen. And once you find the doors where you cannot supply your bread, mm -hmm. they are bars. He says, I'll break the bars of iron. Hallelujah. I'll break them. Uh, or am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. He will break them and you are going to enter in a very difficult market yeah. where they say we don't want Zambians. Your company will be there. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. I'm looking forward for Zambians to start getting into Europe. Yeah. To get into China. Yeah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you are unstoppable. Oh. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Children of the Most High God, I can go on. I'm feeling good. But let me give you this last prophetic word, the 12th one. Isaiah chapter 60. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60. I want to pray for people here and speak to people. You are too precious before God. Isaiah chapter 60. Are you there? My goodness. This is what happens when God brings you, Vanamuila, to be unstoppable. Do you read the word? The twelfth word of prophecy from your God after he has uh, targeted you, he has shaken you up, he has done something, comes from Isaiah chapter 60, verse 10 and 11. The Bible says, and I read, The sons of strangers shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath, I smote you. I made you my target. But in my favor, I have had mercy on you. Amen. Verse 11. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. Amen. Oh, dear God. Are you hearing? Amen. Your gates shall be open continually. Amen. They shall not be shut day all night Amen. that men may bring unto you the, the forces or the wealth of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought I want to say to somebody here today let me say this God says after he has done something to you Graham Gala, in his wrath 
And he says, now in my favor. Now that I've made you my target. I humbled you. I dealt with you. Bali kusevanya. Bali kuseka. Abantu bali kuwela. Now I'm going to favor you. I am going to bring you to a place of favor. And here is what I'm going to do. This is the twelfth word. And I want to say it prophetically to somebody. From this Sunday, your gates of blessings will remain open. From this Sunday, your gates of blessings will remain open. When you hear Vashmuila, God saying, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure. That is Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men and women bring into your bosom. May God command people to come and meet your needs. Your gates shall remain open because you are unstoppable. Those of you that are investing in Zimbabwe, I want you to know that the doors will remain open. Those of you that say, even if there is xenophobia in South Africa, I will invest there. You will not be a xenophobia victim. The Bible says a thousand shall fall on your left side and ten thousand on your right side. I don't know who I'm talking to, but no plague shall come near your dwelling place. God has already put a mark on your forehead. Unstoppable. If I were you, Changala, tomorrow I would go into town and those who print t-shirts and just get a nice one and print nice ones and just say, I am unstoppable. And put the scripture there. No gates will remain shut. And when God says, sons of foreigners, Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to. Amen. Not talking about that. I'm talking about the word. Amen. Our forefathers, my father went to the grave without a plot. Without a plot. Without a plot, Mkapoka. You don't say Obasha Pokele, Yake Sakurin. Nava Navant. Nave Shkuru. No, look, how many of you say Mkapoka Naine? Oh! You see, this is God's way. He says, Edward, if God wants, He will come to you and say, listen, because you are unstoppable, you are going to live in a house you never built. Amen. You will eat the fruits you never planted. Amen. That's a God who can make a sinner to say, Plant. Edward is coming. Plant. Amen. Plant. Amen. Yes, you have already. I know Edward. Glory to God. Am I talking to somebody here? How many of you sense? How many of you sense this is your hour of favor? Amen. And when God favors you, he will do things that you never even thought. You say, Pastor, I want God to make me his target. Is there somebody here? Please stand and rush to the front. If you say, honey, please come here. You say, Pastor, I want God to make me his target. I am going to have a company. I'm going to prosper. I'm going to do this. But as you come, remember to delete certain people from your phone, okay? Amen. I want to pray for you. And pray for Tim Kamned out there. I want you to know that Zambia is at a good place. Others are seeing poverty. Look at me. And those of you watching me by television. Let me say this. You know a big tree. Very big tree. If four of us go to look at that big tree. Four of us. One will see a big canoe from the tree. One will count how many of bags of charcoal would come from that tree. One would see how many sofas he can make for that, uh, what's that market near Kuriakumater? Buseko, they will know how many planks they can get. 
And the German will come and stand there and see how many planks would come for a Mercedes Benz. But of the four of you, the one who will get more money is somebody thinking about a Benz. Because that plank you see in Mercedes Benz, it costs just one on the dashboard. I don't know how many bags of charcoal you can sell. And somebody will see a canoe. And that canoe can't even go to Lake Tanganyika. It's for Kafue River near the bridge there. Now what fish would you catch from there? But may God open our eyes. Amen. That where people are seeing bad in Zambia, may you see good. Amen. Where they are seeing no opportunities, May God show you opportunities Amen. right here in Zambia. Amen. I say it to you and to Tim Kamnet. I want you to lift up your hands. You say, Pastor, I want to be unstoppable. Lift up your hands and say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, am I am your child. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against my family. I've sinned against the church. I've sinned against the nation. Father God, as I lift up my hands, I pray that you may put my name on the list of those that you have targeted for greatness, those that are unstoppable. My hands are raised. Forgive me of every sin that I've ever committed. Jehovah God, I thank, you I thank you for this message. For this message. Speak, in my life. Speak in my life. Speak in my family. Speak in my family. And, in this and in this nation. That Jehovah you may raise your own. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Lord I pray for all the people. Yes, whose hands are raised. Yes, and those that are watching by television. Father raise in this nation. Men and women that you have targeted. The hour has come for you to show us your greatness. And I surrender this church and those watching by television to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. As it is my tradition, I want to speak to you. Just you. You remember that even Jesus he would speak to the crowd, but he would call the twelve and say, come aside. You are my twelve. Let's say bye to Tim Kamnet. Give them a big hand. Give them a big hand.